The new major telecommunications player, Dito Telecom, reassured its subscribers that they would provide options for activating their SIMs and completing proper registration after the SIM registration loss deadline had lapsed. MJ Mondehari is back for another news. The SIM registration law is now in full effect after the National Telecommunications Commission, or NTC, concluded the registration of SIM cards in the Philippines. The original deadline for SIM registration was on April 26 this year, but it was extended by 90 days and ended on July 25th. To address the concerns of their subscribers who were unable to register their SIMs, Dito Telecom's Chief Administrative Officer, Attorney Adel Tamano, told SMNA News that they would offer means for reactivating the SIMs and completing the proper registration. Tamano also urged subscribers to take advantage of the five-day reactivation period. Currently, there are 7.62 million Dito subscribers who have already registered their SIM cards, while Smart has 50 million and Globe has 48.4 million registered SIMs. The total number of successful SIM registrations reached 105.9 million, which falls within the target range between 100 to 110 million registered SIMs by the deadline. By July 31, all unregistered SIMs will be permanently deactivated and can no longer be reactivated or registered. For Gadda Mabula of Philippines, MJ Mondihar, SMNI News. President Ferdinand Bombo Marcos Jr. congratulated the Philippine women's football team for their win against New Zealand. Here are the details in MJ Mondihar's report. Filipinos are all out cheering for Team Filipinas in the ongoing FIFA Women's World Cup 2023. And when the Pinay squad emerged victorious against New Zealand with a score of 1-0, our countrymen erupted in cheers. They are just a few of the millions of Filipinos who celebrated the historic match of the Philippine squad. According to PBA Partless Representative Migs Nograles, a sports and youth representative in Congress, this victory is a significant milestone, especially as it marks the first ever goal made by the Philippine team in the tournament. Very, very proud of because the assist, you nag assist uh, si Sarah, you nag assist dun sa naka goal na si Serena, um, tagadabao. Actually, yeah. mm, siya. Yeah. So, di ba, uh, nataas na naman natin ng bali na pagkadabawin niyo. As a former athlete, Nograles emphasized that the historic performance of the Filipinas is a great achievement that uplifts Filipino women on the world stage. Mas nakaka-proud to see that the women, kasi usually sa soccer, sa football, lalaki, di ba, very dominant. And now the women are really showing that they are capable and they can really... Uh, showcase the talents of the Filipino women. The Malacanang also lauded the success of the Philippines in the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. In an official post on Twitter, President Bongbong Marcos sent warm congratulations to the Philippine women's football team. However, according to Nograles, the president did not mention in his recent State of the Nation address the administration's plans for sports development. Despite that, Filipino athletes continue to reap success in various sports disciplines, including weightlifting superstar Hidalin Diaz and pole vaulting superstar E.J. Obiana. Nonetheless, Nograles said she is confident that the president will not neglect the nation's athletes. Well, I would have wanted to hear uh, kung ano yung pwede natin magawa this second regular session no, um, sa ating mga athletes if there's going to be additional budget and all. I'm sure naman it's also part of the uh, priorities of the president. In the upcoming budget season, Nagdalas expects the leadership of the House of Representatives to work together in advocating for the necessary funds for the athletes. For Ghana, my beloved Philippines, MJ Mondehar, SBI News. A congressman exposed the current state inside the new Bilibid prisons and the recently reported shootout on Tuesday night, July 25th. Here are the details in MJ Mondehar's report from the Congress. In a press conference at the House of Representatives, AC CIS Congressman Irwin Tulfo disclosed the information to receive from inside the New Bilibid Prisons or NBP, particularly the reported shootout on Tuesday, July 25th. 
Abdul Fossad, his sources within the Bilibid confirm that there was indeed a gunfight between two gangs using high-tech firearms. Yung aking uh, source, eh, kita niya dalawang pangkat nagbabarilan dito isang grupo, dito isang grupo, nagpapalitan ng putok. Maririnig ninyo na mayroong pang automatic gunfire. So ibig sabihin, merong matataas na kalibre ng baril, hindi na uh, sumpak, hindi na pugakak, hindi paltik, kundi talaga mga mukhang high-tech na mga baril. The congressman also mentioned that one person was killed in a shootout. Nine others were injured in an hour-long clash. The root cause of the violence was said to be linked to illegal drug activities. Tulfo pointed out that illegal practices inside the Bilibid have resurfaced, including drug-related issues. He was saying na uh, ongoing pa rin yung activities even though there's a change of leadership. Ay may ongoing po tuloy-tuloy yung kalakaran ng uh, ikang uh, droga. Tuloy-tuloy po yung kalakaran ng mga illegal activities. Uh, yung sinasabing binuwag na po yung kubol ay ongoing yung kubol ngayon. Recently, conjugal visits inside Bilibid were extended to one week. But for Congressman Tulfo, such extensions were too much. Reports also emerged regarding inmates in the maximum security compound ordering food for delivery and using online shopping platforms to have items delivered inside the prison. In response to these revelations, Tulfo filed House Resolution Number 1136 to investigate the situation inside the prison. And this includes the disturbing issue of an inmate who was found dead inside a septic tank in Bilibid. The missing inmate was identified as Michael Cataroja, who had a case of violating the anti-fencing law. Urging the appropriate House Committee to uh, conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation uh, on the incident of inmate uh, Cataroja who was reported missing from the maximum security compound and then uh, found dead inside the septic tank of NBP. Tulfo said he had already coordinated with Justice Secretary Boy Remulia regarding such reports inside Bilibid and that the public disclosure of their information is a result of their coordination with the Justice Secretary. Actually, nag-respond naman si Secretary Remulia when we exposed this on my radio program uh, last week uh, after two days, nag-order si Secretary Remulia na hanapin ito si Cataroja. So 15 yung reports sa akin, uh, I think 17 namin in expose. Uh, two days later, 19, uh, nagbigyan instructions sa Kitari Rimulia na hanapin. The most notorious criminals in the Philippines are now being held inside the new Bilibid prisons and the lawmaker that divulged his information wants the government to take action immediately. For Ganamabalab Philippines, I'm Jay Mondihar, SMNI News.